Today marks 150 years since the deadliest fire in the United States history. It devastated part of Northeast Wisconsin particularly hard as the flames took between 1,200 and 2,000 lives in Peshtigo. Our photographer Matt Coles gives us a look back at the history of October 8th, 1871. There was nothing once they came out of the river. If they saved their lives, they came out to nothing, just piles of ashes. When I walk into work, I see flowers left just silently. A lot of people will come in here on their own. I don't know their stories or their faces, but it's sort of just a sort of a symbolic gesture to say that those people were here and they lived here and we're honoring them by sort of having that there for them. We lost anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 people. We will never know the exact amount. It's a terrible story in one way, but yet it's part of life. Peshtigo at the time had the largest wood products manufacturing facility in the world. It employed hundreds of people. There was a census the year prior, 1870, and there were 1,750 people in the populace of Peshtigo. They feel that 800 survived. That's my reason for being here, is that I think it's important. Now, according to the Wisconsin Historical Society, while Peshtigo was the worst hit town in the fire, in all it burned 1.5 million acres in several northeast Wisconsin counties. So why did the Peshtigo fire get overlooked? The Peshtigo Fire Museum says because the telegraph lines were destroyed, word of the fire did not get out immediately. The nearest working telegraph was in Green Bay, 45 miles away. Two days after the fire, news of the total destruction reached the governor's office. Governor Lucius Fairchild was already en route to Chicago with supplies to help the survivors of the Chicago fire, which happened the same night where nearly 300 people lost their lives there. The governor's wife then rerouted food and supplies to go to Peshtigo. So reports kind of show the cause of the fire was in large part due to weather. That's why we have Gino here. Gino, what can you kind of tell us about that? Right, it's, so the weather is one of the ingredients, but you also need to look at, well, the, also the fuel source. So there was a prolonged drought that was developing and also there was the fuel source itself. There was a lot of land clearing. So agriculture, stuff like that, that was being used to help clear the fields, but wasn't being disposed properly. So you have the dry brush, you have the drought, and then you also have a strong autumn storm. And then this is the area that did see the burnt of the extent of the Peshtigo fire. And this was the autumn storm. We had a strong area of low pressure that was off towards the west, a gusty winds coming in out of the southwest and temperatures were running around 70 to 80 degrees for October 8th. That's pretty warm with some cold weather on the back side. So you, all you needed was a little bit of a spark and then the winds were really going to start to carry that fire out there. And unfortunately, that's what happened, not just in Peshtigo, but also down in Chicago as well ironically at the same day.